this method, this is, let's see, 1.4 continued, right? This is 1.4 continued. So in this method, we are going to get us geared up for that, really the third method I talked about, completing the square. But first, I'm gonna kind of walk you through the problem or the issue that arises for why we need to complete the square. Like, who cares, right? So if I've got something like x squared equals 25, well then, I can subtract the 25 over and say x squared minus 25 equals zero. Factor, this is a difference of squares. And then using the AC method, x equals five and five. Here, similar, but instead this is imaginary, right? So then you've got to go back to 1.3. This is imaginary, so no real solution. Here with this one, if I were to subtract over 35 equaling zero, right? 2x squared minus 35 equals zero. It doesn't really factor that nice. So what we can do is kind of work backwards so that we are just trying to undo. It's called use via the square root property. Square root property, yeah, just making sure. So I'm gonna divide by the two. So x squared equals 35 over two. And then the next step is to square root x squared. But what do we always have to remember when we take a square root? The plus or minus. Oops. So I've got plus or minus the square root of 32, oh, excuse me, 35 over two. So that would be the answer. So this is called uh, the square root technique, or what does the book call it? Um, the, the square root property, the square root principle, square root, oh, I think square root method. Yeah, there you go. You ought to just listen to me think that one out. Square root method. So here with this one, we can kind of do the same thing because we're going to use completing the square via the square root method. So we're going to keep on that square root train. So I'm going to add the 6 over. So 6x squared equals, let's see, negative 18 plus 6 is 12. Divide by 6, x squared equals 2. Come up here. Square root method x equals plus or minus root 2, right? So far, so good. But now, if we're working on this one, we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to unravel and so that we can isolate the x. So what we're going to do first is add the 10. So I've got 6 times x minus 1 quantity squared equals 12. Divide that 6. So x minus one quantity squared equals two. And now coming back up here, similar to the example above, I've got x minus one equals plus or minus the square root of two. And then the last step, right, because now that we've dropped the parentheses, is to add the one. And there you go. So here we've got two answers, one plus root two, one minus root two. I mean, it's not very pretty, but hey, no one said it had to be the Mona Lisa, right? It just has to be the answer. Nothing too crazy. All right, so this one right here. Oh, that should be, that's a, a righto typo. That's missing an X. Missing an X. So here, if I subtract over, um, let's see, if I subtract over the 5, yeah, let's start there x squared minus 2x minus 4 equals 0. Well, if I try to factor, there's t no two numbers that multiply to negative 4, but yet also add to negative 2. Because I know that 2 and 2 will give us 4, but to get a negative, one of them has to be negative and one has to be a positive, right? To get negative 4 here. But here, if I have plus 2x minus 2x, it's not going to work. Y'all see that? 
So here it's not gonna work. If we try to unravel, like let's say I've got the x squared minus 2x and I subtract the one over equals to four. Well here, if I factor out an x, this doesn't work because what are we set equal to? We're set equal to four. And the principle from the page ago said the zero product principle. Is four zero? No. So the fact that this is set equal to four says no dice, right? Not gonna happen. Can't do it. And even then, since the x squared or the x term has two x terms, we can't do the square root property because you have this floating x. Okay, so here, this, for instances like this, is why we need to complete the square. If you have something wonky, that wonky that's happening and not really working out, completing the square can help you kind of fix the numbers so that to unravel using the square root method, you have numbers that work out primo, okay? Just awesome. So here is the step-by-step. -step. I'm gonna read it to you. Um, the reading of it is weird, I, I mean, I agree, um, but that is the mathematical, technical way to do it, but if it doesn't make sense, that's totally fine, like, I'm a, I learn by doing, I don't really learn by reading, I have to practice it, I have to do it, um, so again, if you read this and you're just like, mm, no, that's totally fine, so, but first, I am going to read it. A second method for solving a quadratic equation is by completing the square. The process is as follows. Write the quadratic equation in standard form, ax squared plus bx plus c equaling zero. Then subtract c from both sides of the equation. Divide both sides of the equation by a. If a equals one, then just skip this step. Add the square of half the coefficient of the x to both sides of the equation. Factor the trinomial side as a perfect square. Take the square root of both sides. And last, solve for x. Okay. So, typically, honestly, I usually just start straight with step two. But it is in your best interest to have the terms in descending order. Like ax squared plus bx plus c. Where you've got your squared, your first, and your no, basically. Oh, and to circle back. This is called a second degree equation because what's the highest exponent that we see? Two. So that's what, again why we call this second degree because the highest exponent present is two. Just, we're gonna talk about that later so might as well touch on it. Okay, so here I'm gonna solve for x. But the numbers 10 x squared, excuse me, blah, x squared plus 10 x minus four equals five not really helpful to us in any way of, of using the zero product principle and the square root method that we have so far. So here's what we're going to do. This is just practicing completing the square and then we will use the square root method. So again, like I said, I usually start with step two. So x squared plus 10x equals, let's see, nine because I'm adding the four over basically I want my x's on one side numbers on the other letters on one side numbers on the other now what I do to help me is I build what I call a skeleton you do not have to do this but when I was learning it helped me just kind of get the ball rolling and remember what to do next because to complete the squares that we're trying to get this perfect square binomial, we're trying to get it back into this version so that we can easily unravel to solve for x alone. So that's the whole point here, by the way. We want it so that it's a perfect square binomial. Right now, we have a trinomial that's not perfect. So how we do that is we take the letter drops, so in this case x, the operation drops, so in this case addition. Now to get the number right here, you look at the middle term and you divide by two. So that's five. I'll tell you why here in a minute, just kind of go with me for now. You take the middle number and you divide by two. Now to get the blanks, 
you take this number, the five, and you square it. Here, this like thing squared helps me remind remind myself. Helps me helps me. I can't talk. Helps me remember what goes in the blanks. But it's five squared or this number squared. So twenty five and twenty five go here. But now on the left hand side 25 is included in this perfect square binomial because if we were to expand it by factoring or aka foil you would get x squared plus 10x plus 25 so the 25 is hidden in this here but remember whatever we add to one side of the equal sign we have to add to the other so we have i guess invisibly secretively added 25 in on the left but we have to visibly and actually add 25 on the right. So we've added 25 to both sides, but here don't on the left, don't worry about 25 again, but here on the right, you need nine plus 25. Um, so nine plus 25, what is that, 34? Cool. So now, notice how this is very similar to the example above that let us get down to 1 plus root x, 1 minus, excuse me, square root 2, 1 minus square root 2. So all we're going, so we'll actually pause. This is completing the square. That's it. This, yeah, you did it. But now to actually solve for x, we need to unravel by using that square root method. So I'm going to square root both sides. x plus 5 equals the positive negative root 34. Now subtract the 5. So minus 5 plus or minus root 34. So I've got minus 5 plus the square root of 34. And minus 5 minus the square root of 34. And that's our answer. Okay, so a quick side note on the y. Quick side note on y. Why we do this. So if you if you ever took like a stats class, like an S, well, excuse me, I lied, SAT prep class or ACT prep class or like a number sense class or number theory class, well, number sense, they teach you how to do a lot of things in your head because it's just faster than doing it on pen and paper. So if you have a perfect square binomial, so like A plus B squared, how to get its trinomial is you get the first number squared plus the product of these two numbers and then doubled. So that's 2AB. And then the last is B squared. So for example, if I gave you X plus 6 quantity squared, to get the first one, you square the first thing. So in case they, to this case, it's X. To get the last term, you take the last number and you square it, which is in this case, 36. To get the middle term, you combine and double. So that'd be plus 12x. So if I gave you x minus 9 squared, pause the video and try it. You get x squared plus 81 minus 18x. Cool. So if the shortcut way is to combine and double, then here we have to do the opposite. So you split it, which is why here's x, here's the number. So opposite of combining, we're splitting. So letter number. And then what's the opposite of double? Well, double is times 2. So the opposite of that is divide by 2. So that's why it's 10 becomes 5. And then also why this number here, this get the last number of the trinomial is the last number squared last number squared. And there you go.